Hey everyone, it's Jeff and Randy, the research rat with peptidecritic.com. And today we wanted to do a short PSA covering a uh, product that keeps rearing its ugly head. And it is this knockoff, and I should be very clear, knockoff, uh, hum Humapen Ergo 2 from Lily. And it is not. What it actually is, is a Julin pen, a lower quality, I might add, Julin pen 1. Uh, they have a, they have the same mechanism. They have uh, a slightly different uh, mold on the uh, ratchet, but the, the body is the same length. And what's crazy is the threads are the same size. This one extends a little more, but you can thread them, you can interchange them. The injection molding on these is different, but that's something you see change on V2 pens. So, Avoid this. Uh, it is a subpar product to this Julin pen, which you know doesn't really sound as uh, appealing as the Huma Pen Ergo 2 uh, from Lily. Again, this is not from Lily. I wanted to bring that up, and I get I get why you go for this because it's going to be the best because it's you know Lily, and they they would have to make the best product uh, in order for it to be you know used in a non research setting. But we're researchers. Uh, typically what you want to go for is the uh, Luxura. If you want to have the, that name written on it, these are really nice. And this is actually what the V2 pen was meant to copy. And that's why we suggest the V2 pen because uh, we don't really notice a difference between the V2 pens and this other than the weight of the metal cap. That's it. I can actually take this off and put it on one of our V2 pens and it fits perfectly. That's, that's the origin of the story of the V2 pen. Uh, but, you know, there's other ones like there's uh, I pulled them out. This is the actually the uh, Julin Pen 2. We like this. It is a nice mechanism. Uh, they come out with a three. And what we don't like is this uh, the sleeve for the uh, cartridge is uh, feels like just really cheap plastic. So but again, nice heavy cap and uh, heavy, heavy body. This is probably one of the heavier pens. Um, you know, other ones people will actually ask us about. We have them. Uh, Oh, drop some. It's this humane pen, and it's it's got a really ratchety mechanism. It's all plastic. I don't hate the thing, but it just feels cheap. Uh, and they're not cheap. They're they're fairly expensive. They actually come in like a nice box, and uh, you know, I love it's got you know Chinese writing all over it. It's fun, but uh, if if you have one, great. I wouldn't seek these out though. Uh, the other one that people tend to seek out is the Gansolin pen. And this is uh, a really nice pen. This actually is five amino one MQ in it right now. It's uh, it's interesting because it's, you don't just, you don't just ratchet it and push. As you see, when I back this out, I have to push it and it, it extends. With this one, I just twist it and the units change. So I have one here with a needle on it, and I'll show you what's interesting about it. So here we have it. It's got, let's see, we set it to how many units? We're gonna go to 40. Okay, just looking through the camera LCD to see what you see. So we've got a needle on here, going to expose. Okay, let's see. So I'm just gonna push the button on the back. Oh, wow. It's an auto injector. So this is a really cool product. Uh, we're thinking about bringing them into uh, our store. If you are interested, let us know in the comments, but we don't have them. Uh, if you can find one, awesome, get it. You won't be disappointed. I would avoid this for researching with things like NAD or glutathione or GHK because this injects, it doesn't inject super fast, but it's an auto injector, so it injects faster than you would probably want to do those, uh, you know, painful ones, especially if the buffering isn't good on uh, your NAD. But these are awesome. So we're thinking about bringing those in. But to get back to the main topic of this, the Lily pen is not a Lily pen. Uh, oh, I have another one here I should pull out. Uh, another question we get, and I actually got this the other day. Uh, we have a uh, Novo Pen 5 here, and uh, these are cool because you can put it to you know however many units you want. 
Then it's got an LCD screen on the back, it's blank now. But if I press it, then it shows 20 units. So that's awesome. But what's uh, not awesome is when you compare them, there's nowhere to thread your uh, needle on. So when you put the cartridge in, it just would stick out like that. But there are parts you can 3D print to just, uh, you know, make it so you can thread a needle on. That's what some people use as a workaround. This is my own pen. I don't really care to do that. I think it's a pain in the ass. Uh, I just got one to see if this method actually worked. And, uh, you know, I'm a collector. So, you know, hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, the big takeaway should be, if you see something that looks like this, like I don't truly don't care where anyone gets their pens from or if they use pens, but if you do, don't do this. Just don't do this. This is not, this is not good. This is bad. And uh, a little personal story, uh, a friend of mine decided to go rogue. Uh, I guess he didn't, he felt like I wasn't going to just give him a pen, which I was happy to do. Uh, and he found one of these, he paid $60 for it and it broke, which caused him to waste a crap ton of a really expensive peptide. And uh, yeah, <laughs> he was he was out a bunch of money for the pen. So I would just avoid these. I would avoid these at all costs, and uh, yeah, it's, there's your PSA. If you have any questions, uh, if you need a V2 pen, um, you can go to our website. We have a community you can join at community.peptidecritic.com. And as always, happy researching from Jeff and Randy the Research Rat with Peptide Critic.